law of a septenary. And one of the greatest mysteries of ancient Hindu mathematics was the possibility of dividing the seven creative gods equally into the twelve creative powers without a remainder. And that was a fine mathematical problem, and it was solved. It is possible that seven can be distributed evenly through twelve. And at the same time, neither the twelve nor the seven is fractionalized in any way. This was one of the old calculations of the Hindus, and I've seen the calculation made. It can be done. But by this means, therefore, twelve, eternally moving into seven, causes a septenary, no two parts of which are the same. Therefore, no one of the septenary contains the same relations of the twelve elements, nor all of them. Thus we have seven basic potencies, or powers, which are the objectifications of the twelve potentials. And this moving from the state of twelve in suspension to seven in projection constitutes creation. Creation, therefore, emerges as a septenary. Now, the septenary in this case is mysterious for two reasons. And in order to understand this mystery, we must again go back to our ancient peoples. We know that they recognized five elements. And we know also that they recognized man as consisting of five parts, yet they always called him a septenary. And in order to create the septenary in the personality of man, it was necessary for the Hindu to divide the emotional nature of man into two parts, and the mental nature, giving a septenary involving two forms of mind, higher and lower, and two forms of emotion, constructive and destructive. But this was not the original intention. This was again the blind, or the subterfuge. In the creation of a solar system, according to the ancient Hindu astronomers, each of the planets has five bodies, and they share together the sixth and seventh bodies of the sun. Therefore, the sun, as a field of energy, surrounds the planets. And the sixth and seventh body of each planet is part of the solar body. So there are five distinguishable planetary bodies. And the sun then has its own two indivisible natures or qualities which permeate the other five, forming again this mystery of the five and two, uh, because the sixth and seventh bodies of planets are not individualized, but are within the se sixth and seventh orbits of the solar mystery, or in the womb of the sun. They are not born. Only suns are born. Planets are embryos. Therefore, no form of life on a planet uh, can transcend five the levels of development without moving from a planetary to a solar focus. Thus, the sixth and seventh uh, Buddha to come are secret. The sixth and seventh senses are secret. The sixth and seventh vowels are uncertain. All is the same symbolism. And in this, the ancient Jews, the sun and moon, as the parents of the world, the marriage of the sun and moon producing man, as symbols of these sixth and seventh bodies, which later uh, will be clarified through uh, the release of these perceptions after man attains the sixth and seventh level of consciousness within himself. But the fact that man must accomplish this by universalizing his own nature is indicated in Buddhism, Hinduism, even in Christianity, for universal consciousness, cosmic consciousness, uh, true development of illumination, or the complete perfection of the mystical experience, moves at the means of the consciousness of man, moves from the five planetary levels which can be reached for the senses, to the sixth and seventh which belong to the sun, for the sun is the messiah of the mystery center of the solar system, and the sixth and seventh degrees of consciousness have to transcend matter, whereas the other five are within the power of matter. So these calculations were made long ago. We wonder sometimes how they were made, but they were. And they have survived to influence every thought we have had since. Now, someone's...